why do we why do we not critically think that qiraat are just mistakes allah so qiraat have different meanings sometimes Here is part two of this series. So if you missed part one, go watch it. You can find the link in the description box. The Dawa boys like Farid, after all of these years, are now forced to come clean and admit that there are differences in the Qiraat and their meanings. But Farid's final and only desperate bankrupt argument for the difference in meaning is they all complement one another. Look at these meanings, how they're comp complementary and how they add to the meaning of the text. Which is, of course, a big fat lie. And here's why. Yeah. The early Salaf did not agree with modern day Muslims like Farid. They did not think highly of other Qiraat or readings simply because they implied their own human logic and even rejected some of the readings that did not sound logical to them. But wait. Are the other readings not a revelation from Allah as well? Oh boy. Yet the early Muslims rejected them anyway. Maybe our friend Farid here can do takfir on the early Muslims if he claims to have a spine in his body. So here is my proof. We can find this information mentioned by renowned Sunni scholars like the Mufassir Ar-Razi in his tafsir. The reading Ajib 2 in Surah 37 verse 12 with the Dhamma attributes surprise to Allah and ignorance is impossible for Allah. And that's why some of the early Muslims rejected this reading, Ajib 2 against Ajib Ta with a Fatha. And subhanAllah, every time you find a difference in meaning, you'll find some yeah, amazing reason behind it. Yeah. And in the book Majmu' al-Fatawa, volume 12, page 492, Shaykh al-Islam himself, Ibn Taymiyyah, explains that early Muslims, i.e. the Salaf, used to make mistakes. Mistakes? Wow! Wait, wait, wait. Ibn Taymiyyah, who came seven centuries later, claims that the 7th century and 8th century Salaf who learned the recitation directly from the Prophet and the Tabi'een made mistakes? Just wow! Remember, this is the Shaykh of Farid talking. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah continued saying that some of these early Muslims used to even reject certain Qira'at. And he mentions a Tabi'i, a student of the Sahaba, Al Qadi Sharih, rejected a canonical reading for Surah 37, Ayah 12, that says, Allah is shocked and his reasoning for rejecting that different qira'a is Allah cannot be shocked else we have to accept that Allah is ignorant like any human being. So Ya Farid, should anyone listen to you or Ibn Taymiyyah and the Salaf who rejected Quranic readings that did not sound logical to them? So what do you mean that different readings or different meanings complement one another. Look at these meanings, how they're comp complementary and how they add to the meaning of the text. The early Salaf did not agree with you, my friend. So why are you deceiving your gullible Muslim audience? Have some decorum. You'll find some yeah, any amazing reason behind it. Yeah. Get some hikmah. You are lacking wisdom, ya Farid. And on the next page, Ibn Taymiyyah himself mentions chapter 13, a falam yayasi used to also be rejected by famous companions like Ibn Abbas, Habr al-Ummah, Turjuman al-Quran, and the cousin of the Prophet himself. Ibn Abbas used to read it as a falam yatabayyani instead. And in the authentic hadith, we can find the reason for that. According to Ibn Abbas, the scribe made a mistake, an error, because he was sleepy or drowsy. Yet we find that mistake now in the most popular reading, the 1924 Cairo edition, i.e. the Hafs Quran. And in another ayah, وَقَدَ رَبُّكَ used to be rejected and read instead by the early Muslims as وَوَصَّ رَبُّكَ And Ibn Taymiyyah also explains that some of the early Salaf, like Ibn Mas'ud, removed chapters 113 and 114, the last two chapters, from their personal masahif, which are also known as Al-Mu'awwadatayn. Imagine, 
two surahs, two entire chapters of the Quran completely removed by the Sahaba, yet can now be found again in today's Hafs Quran. And Ibn Taymiyyah continued saying, early Muslims like Ubay, the Sahaba, added two extra surahs, namely Surah al hafd and Surah al khala Here is a list of the big Sahaba who included these two surahs in their personal masahif. What happened to these surahs? Allahu A'lam. Right, my Muslim friends? Allah knows best. Tawatir and Quranic preservation are a big fat lie. Nothing but scam from the Dawagandists. I rest my case. And that's why we always say, without lies, Islam dies. Please stay away from Islam. Yeah.